Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus. The last tutorial, we actually just finished shading the car. This is what it looks like right now shaded with a background that reflects blue. So now what we want to do is actually light it. And the way I want to light this vehicle is going to be basically similar to what's called studio lighting. So studio lighting actually is going to have an infinity curve and also lights so that it helps show off the model in its best view. All right, so let's get started. First of all, you just want to make sure that your vehicle is facing the front view and side view like it's supposed to. And second of all, I'm going to go ahead and hide my background layer and maybe turn on the grid so I can see that it's actually in space. I am going to go to my side view. I'm going to go to create EP curve tool and I'm going to create my infinity curve using a curve. I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift as I click, whoops, not caps lock. I'm going to hold down shift as I go down. And as I go closer to the corner, I'm going to just go ahead and release shift and just kind of click here to create an infinity curve. Hold down shift to make it go straight all the way through and then press enter. If you see any lopsidedness or anything that needs to be fixed, right click control vertices and I'm going to straighten these out by selecting them and then grabbing this scale and then crushing them. Same thing for the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and grab these guys and just make them straight and flat. I can also fix the curve by clicking individual vertices and just kind of helping the curve out a little bit. That needs to go this way. I grab these guys again and just kind of scale it flat. Okay, now that I have my infinity curve, I'm gonna go to my object mode, move this to one side, duplicate it, move it to the other side. Select these two and we're gonna go to loft. You can either go to your surfaces tab and then click on this little button right here, which is called loft. So what loft does is actually take, takes the curves that you created and actually creates a mesh. Now that we have a mesh, which is made in NURBS, I can actually scale it to fit my environment. Now my camera is gonna go this way, so I'm actually going to rotate my infinity curve and bring it out a little bit, just scale it. I'm also going to delete the history and then if you like, hide your curves. Control H. Actually, this would be a good time to create a new camera. So create camera, camera. I'm going to look through it. So go to panels, look through selected and actually place the camera in a way so you can see what it's, where it's going to be. This is going to be my render cam. I think that's gonna be a pretty good angle. And then I'm going to keyframe the camera. So select your camera by clicking on this little icon right here, which is select camera, click on S, and that's gonna create a keyframe. The purpose for that is if I accidentally move my camera around, I can always go back to the timeline and it will set it back. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to HD because after all, 640 by 480 is in fact my grandmother's television. And I would like to actually make it look like it's for an HD television. So let's go ahead and Click on our render settings and scroll down. Right now, renderable camera is outside. I'm gonna go ahead and grab camera one. And my presets, I'm gonna go ahead and grab HD 720. I've got my resolution gate on, which is this little blue sphere in a white square that will show me where the object is going to be placed in the camera, and then I'm going to render. Now the issue starts when you're trying to render in HD right away. When it comes to lighting, you usually want to start small and then start growing it as you start getting more detailed and more detailed. Okay, so here is my fancy vehicle in HD and you can see that it's really large and you can see that my infinity squares, I'm um, sorry, my infinity curve is working. I just need to go ahead and start lighting it. Now, I don't want it to be this large. It took about 20 seconds and even though that doesn't seem very much, I can actually reduce it. So I'm going to go to my options test resolution and I'm going to drop it to 50%. So when I render it, it's only going to render 50% of it. And that's okay for starting my render. I just want to kind of preview my lighting and kind of go from there. Next, I'm going to go back to my perspective camera and I'm going to start placing lights. Usually when you place two lights is to the left and to the right of the camera. So I'm going to be using an area light. So create light area light. And it starts at the center of the grid, so I'm gonna move it up. And an aerial light is basically this little guy right there, and that line sticking out of it is the, it's the way it's pointing. That's where the light's coming from. 
So what I want to make sure is that it's always pointing to my car. So I'm going to click on the letter T, which is going to actually show me a second manipulator. This is the center of interest. I'm going to place that center of interest in my vehicle or somewhere near my vehicle. And then from here, I'm going to just push my light back and it should be, you know, next to the camera and just slightly higher and then, you know, scale it up a little bit. Now this light is based on scale. So you have to be very careful when you scale a area light. Other, other lights don't have that issue, but in this, in this particular light, it has an issue. So let's see what happens when we render. All right, it is very dark, but I'm getting in, I'm starting to get the, the lighting and the shadows. You can see that it's very dark, so I need to scale it up. But you can also see that it's getting some really cool effects when it comes to glass. You can see that the light is actually um, kind of scattering and picking up the, the mental ray glass shader and actually casting a shadow with a different color, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I needed to tweak it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go back to my perspective and I'm gonna scale this. Maybe bring it up a little higher. Again, I'm clicking on the letter T. And then I'm going to duplicate this light and then go to the left side. So control D and then move it to the other side. This is the nice thing about center of interest is that it's always pointing towards the car. So I'm gonna go over here to this side. Again, let's go to camera one and let's see what we get. All right, so now we're actually starting to see the, the lighting. I can see that my car is floating, so I definitely need to fix that. So that's important. Um, there's a lot of noise in my render and I'm not a big fan of all of these shadows there so I might actually move the lights around to make sure I don't capture these shadows. So there's a couple of things I need to tweak. I am going to move this light a little bit closer to the camera and this one too. Maybe slightly lower. And maybe a little bit brighter so I'm just going to scale it a little bit. And to fix the noise, I'm gonna open up my attributes of my light. And it's actually the shadows that are causing that noise. So this is a light, the area light, this is its attributes. And I'm gonna scroll down to shadow. And in shadow, if you keep scrolling down, ignore the use DMAP shadows. You don't, want, you don't wanna use that. You wanna use the ray trace shadows. Right now, the shadow rays are at one, which is pretty low. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this to 20. And I'm going to reduce my ray depth limit just because right depth limit basically means how many times you should reflect or capture a shadow in a reflection. I think one will work. And don't forget to do it to the other side. I'm increasing my shadow rays to 20, changing my ray depth to one, and then take a look at what it's gonna happen. Now, increasing your shadow rays will increase your render. That is, a sac that is the, the dilemma when it comes to quality versus um, quality versus quantity. The longer the renders take, the more beautiful they have a tendency to look, but they also take forever. So you really can't spend forever to actually create these objects. So you kind of have to debate what is more important, quality or quantity. It really depends what studio you work for and how quickly you need the project to turn around. Okay, great. I'm starting to like this a little better. You can see that the noise is significantly less I forgot to increase my, uh, rise my, um, I need to rise my infinity curve just a little bit so it looks like it's actually on the ground. And, uh, and I feel like the environment's a little bit dark so I might actually add a little bit more light there. But in general, it's starting to look good. I still see a little bit of noise here, which I really wanna fix. And you're gonna notice it when you go into HD. I'm gonna keep this and then I'm gonna go ahead and fix this now before I forget. Let's go to the front view and scoot it up a little. You know what? I can always just go into perspective. And this is kind of funny. Sometimes I just make sure that you can actually see the tires through the geometry. And I know that that means that the tires are actually on the ground. Okay, to lighten up the background, I'm going to use what's called uh, 
a ambient light. So create light ambient light. I'm gonna move it up. Actually, I'm gonna move it back. This one you have to be very careful with. It has a tendency to flood your environment evenly. So, you know, you don't get that much of a dramatic, cool look. So I'm definitely going to reduce my intensity because I just need to lighten the background just a little bit. So I reduce my intensity to 0.3 and I'm gonna see what it looks like. This is what it looks like before an ambient light. This is what it looks like with an ambient light. So there's a couple of things I still need to tweak, such as what the heck is that? Um, but in general, it's starting to look pretty decent. The last thing I wanna do is, well, there's a couple other things I can do, such as maybe increase my shadows some more. So for example, my shadow rays, I wanna increase them maybe to 30, just to make the quality a lot nicer. Um, don't forget, both lights. And I also might want to try changing the color a little bit. So I'm gonna scroll back up to color and you just wanna make one side a little bit warmer and the other side a little bit cooler. So usually um, it really depends what you're trying to achieve, but having kind of like the backside lit a little bit bluer makes it look a little bit further away. And having the right side or whatever's closer to the camera a little bit warmer and it has a tendency to make it look a little bit closer. It's just kind of faking it a little bit, but you know, it's, it's kind of nice. It doesn't have to be true dramatic, just very, very subtle because you're going to see that this is this looks subtle, but when I render it, it's going to be very dramatic. So I'm going to keep this image and then I'm going to render. So you can see that even though I just added a little bit of color to the render, you can see how dramatic it changed it. Right? It's really yellow and really blue, so I need to make it a little bit more subtle. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bit lighter and grab the other light and make that lighter still just a little bit too much i just want a subtle change nothing major and uh, maybe just increase the intensity just a little bit more okay definitely like that a little um, much more just got to figure out what this black thing is but um there you go that's basically lighting now the last thing I usually do when I'm about to light something is actually turn on Final Gather. Final Gather you can find in your render settings under indirect lighting until Final Gather. This will definitely brighten up your render. So, and it also will increase your render significantly, but you're gonna get some really nice effects. It actually produces what's called bounce lights for you automatically. So you actually get a lot of bounce lights, which means that if there is any type of color, it will actually affect the environment around it, which is pretty neat. So it, but the problem is, is that it takes longer. So again, that's where you come down to quality versus quantity. I could just leave it in mental ray, but usually with final gather, it's going to look really nice. And then comes the issue of, do I have time here? What it was without final gather here, it is with final gather. So you can see that we're getting some really nice reflections, some really nice bounce lights and the car definitely has a nice uh well it looks really nice i might want to check my camera itself so let's go ahead and select the camera i notice that the background color is black it was our perspective camera that we changed to blue in the original one so what i want to do is actually grab my camera one and then change that to that sky blue that i selected earlier and i'm actually going to relabel this render cam just because Camera one is a little confusing. This is, means that I'm gonna render through this camera. All right, I'm gonna do another render and I'll be right back. And that was the missing factor. You can see that now we're getting sky light here or sky color. Again, this is all about tweaking. You're gonna find out that with lighting and texturing, you tweak, 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 tweak until you get the right look. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the scale of my lights just because it seems a little bit blown out. Let's go ahead and scale these guys down a little bit. Okay, so here's our car. Um, and let's take a look at our car at the very beginning. This is what it looked like just using shaders. This is what it looked like when we changed the environment. So this is just the shaders and now take a look at it. Look what lighting makes such a huge difference on your model. If you don't have good lighting, you really have, you're going to struggle with making your models look good. So even though you may have great models and great textures, if you don't have great lighting, it's going to be very hard to show off your models. So what I'm gonna do is actually render this out in HD and I'm also going to render this out in occlusion. 
and that's going to be an extra je ne sais quoi that's really going to make this look real uh, make it look really good and then i'll show you guys how to do that using um, photoshop and of course you can translate that into after effects so i'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then i'm going to show you the hd render of this and this beauty pass and then the occlusion as well okay so i'll be right back okay so now we're in photoshop and you can see the render it is a 66 percent if i go ahead and zoom in you can see the nice quality render that i just received i also have an occlusion pass so what i'm going to do is go ahead and select this copy it and then paste it on top of my image then i'm going to normal and then over here in the pull down menu and i'm going to go to multiply and occlusion has a tendency to be a little too dark so i have a tendency to go ahead and reduce the opacity but the purpose of occlusion is to give you what's called contact shadows one it'll make the shadows in the bottom of your vehicle towards the ground darker and anything that is close to each other uh, will actually produce a natural shadow so you can see that it's darker on these edges here as well as any a good per, a good point is right here it's going to give you that extra detail that you might have lost in some of the lighting okay guys this is how you light a vehicle hopefully that it was very helpful and i truly hope that this will make your models look spectacular